Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a fountain pen from Diplomat. Diplomat is a German brand since 1922. Uh, they were particularly well known for ballpoint pens and things like that, but they have a really great range of fountain pens. And I am a big, big fan of Diplomat fountain pens. Uh, I have a number of the models in my collection. And uh, I count things like the A2, the Excellence A2 here, as one of my favorite fountain pens. Simple steel nib, cartridge converter, lacquered brass body, but just a great, great writer. Uh, a pen that I fell in love with very early on was this, the Diplomat Aero. Uh, this is the Sunset Orange version. This is one of the, uh, the early versions of the Aero uh, before they changed their capping system and kind of improved that a bit. But a really, really great pen. And actually, the pen we're looking at today is somewhat related to that Aero pen. It's a relatively recent edition. It comes here packaged in the standard Diplomat packaging, which includes uh, that cardboard sleeve there. Then this box, which has a metal sort of a lid that sort of slides over the box. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Um, and then this, and then a the piece of paper or card, and then reveals the pen. Sitting there on a little... Uh, soft little mattress there. This is the Diplomat Elox. Now, it actually is hard to get off of this because once the elastic is around it, it, the elastic gets caught on those little horizontal rings. Underneath the elastic, we get like the little uh, bit of, you know, in international Diplomat guarantee and a couple of ink cartridges there. But we're not here to look at the packaging, are we? We're here to look at the pen. And this is it, the Diplomat Elox. Now, I say it's related to the Aero, and if we hold the two uh, alongside each other here, you can see that they uh, have similar profiles. They've got these similar little end caps, similar clip. Branding is very similar. Uh, whereas this has those fluted sides there. Um, the Elox has the horizontal bands. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this pen, parts and features and all of that kind of stuff. And then do a writing sample and talk about some pros and cons. The Elox is made uh, from anodized aluminium, it's black anodized aluminium body with these accented horizontal rings. Now this is the blue version, obviously. Uh, it comes also in orange, purple, and uh, green, I believe, which or at least as I'm filming this, that's what is around. Um, and it's a really interesting, you know, sort of way of doing it. So you've got, if you look up close, you can see that like the, the rings are actually like cut in to the aluminium body and that accented color anodized on the inside of that. It is a snap cap, uh, which is has the Diplomat soft sliding mechanism. It's very satisfying. And the grip section is the same as the accented color. It's also uh, an aluminium piece of um, an aluminium grip section. It tapers down, uh, quite a step down off the body, off the barrel there, onto the section. It tapers down, this is like little uh, divot there at the end of it, and then we get a number six steel nib. These are made by Yovo, uh, but Diplomat take great care in the nibs that they uh, have on these pens. And this is a, this particular one is a medium. You can see uh, it's engraved there with Diplomat since 1922, and then the Ink flower logo, which can also there be found on the end of the uh, cap. So the cap has this simple domed ends. It's a Zeppelin shaped pen, uh, which is the same as the Aero. Uh, and yeah, so the cap expands out, very smooth transition down off the barrel, which also tapers down to that same sort of gray metal uh, end cap, same color as the clip, which is firm but usable um the join one point of uh, of uh concern of these pens is the join there of the clip onto that little uh bracket uh so uh, i had to actually had to get my aero repaired um where the cap the clip just came off um so something to be aware of it is branded with diplomat germany around the end of the cap as i said it is that slip and let's uh that uh, soft sliding capping mechanism. Very, very nice. So you unscrew the body of the pen off the, uh, off the section there. Uh, you get some pretty 
solid threads there, and then it's standard international cartridge converter. A converter is provided, and as I said when I showed the packaging, there's a couple of cartridges in there as well. Um, it is not eye droppable, it is metal, there's no O-rings, there's no anything, so it is cartridge converter. But at least it is international, and at least those things are provided. So as I said, it is a number six size nib uh, made by Yovo. It's got a simple plastic feed. This is a medium, once again, as I said, and it comes uh, commercially regularly available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Uh, so it's a pretty good sort of stock standard cartridge converter, number six Yovo nib. It should all work fairly smoothly, you know, and it does. Um, what makes it, the Elox interesting is the body shape that interesting profile it has, uh, and these horizontal rings cut out of it, which provide an interesting tactile experience. Uh, it's not gonna be to everyone's taste, but uh, I think it looks, it looks great. It's a good pen in the hand and it writes well. Size comparison now alongside the Lamy Safari, the stock standard. You can see it is just ever so slightly shorter when it is capped, uh, and it compares in terms of girth. I think like the width of both these pens is pretty, uh, pretty much the same. Uncapped, it comes in at around a similar kind of length, uh, but what uh, the Diplomat, you know, sort of with the difference is, of course, the length of that nib, the Lamy nib being considerably shorter, uh, and then when you get uh, that sort of extra length off there, you know, you do lose a little bit of length in the body of the pen, and because it does taper down, it does feel smaller in the hand than the Lamy Safari. You can post the Elox. It doesn't always sit exactly sort of flat in there, uh, but it does post relatively well and deep enough uh, to make it usable. I'll show that in a second in the hand, uh, but you can see it's still slightly shorter there than the Lamy Safari. Seeing the grip sections alongside each other here, you see that the uh, it's a round section, which is great, uh, but the, uh, you know, the, that, as opposed to the triangular section of the Lamy Safari, but it is a little bit narrower. And this is one of the things about the, the Elox and the Aero that I have had kind of a bit of an issue with is just the, how narrow that section feels in comparison to the width of the body behind it. Well, let's talk the dimensions of the Diplomat Elox then. So it's 139 millimeters when it is capped. It's 128 when it is uncapped. And as I said, that section, if you're, hold, you're holding it down, you can feel that step down off the barrel. You don't feel the little divot at the end there. And that divot is for the, uh, the capping mechanism of the pen, sort of where the point where it holds. Um, but the section does taper quite a lot. Around the middle there, it's about 10 millimeters, uh, but it does taper. And if you hold it further back, you do feel that step down. While it's not sharp, you definitely do feel it. But if you hold it down off that, it can, for some people, just feel a little bit, uh, a little bit narrow. When the pen is posted, it's about 160 millimeters. And you can see there that the cap, it's not a huge step down off the cap. And once again, the edges are quite you know, smooth, there's no sharp bits that catch. Uh, so it sits in the webbing of the hand and that's okay. Uh, it doesn't put the balance off too much, uh, but you can definitely feel the extra weight on the end there. The pen weighs 33 grams, 22 in the body and 11 in the cap. So the balance does, you are putting a third of the weight uh, on the back of the pen there, but as I said, you don't feel it so much. My preferred way of writing with this is uncapped, even though, unposted, sorry. Um, even though it does feel slightly smaller in the hand, there's enough sort of pen in your hand to really you know, feel comfortable writing with it like that. Let's do a quick writing sample now with this pen. This is the oh, hard start there. Diplomat Elox with a number six steel nib. And as I said, this is a medium. The ink I have in this at the moment is Robert Oster. School blue, which I think matches the blue nicely there. The blue has a lovely luminescence to it, kind of. Uh, it's a nice sort of rich dark blue, but when it, the light catches it, it really highlights some beautiful uh, lighter color there. One of the lovely properties of anodized aluminium. Okay, so a number six Yovo nib. You expect a certain writing experience with that, and this doesn't let you down. 
Diplomat take great care with their nibs, as I said earlier. Now, this hard start was not indicative of, of the, the writing experience of the pen. The pen has sort of been uncapped and waved around a little bit, and it's not been used in a couple of days uh, after I've sort of prepared this review. So you can also see just how more, much more saturated the ink was at that point. So that sort of a hard start, not indicative of this pen at all. But it writes smooth, it writes, you know, pretty consistently. It's not super wet. Like, I've had wetter uh, pens from Diplomat. In fact, my A2, the Excellence A2, is very wet. Um, but yeah, let's do some fast writing. It keeps up absolutely fine. You know, it is wet enough, absolutely. School Blue isn't the wettest of inks either. Um, but it, it writes nicely and smoothly. It keeps up. There's no there's no skipping or anything like that. So like a little hard start there if it's dried out, of course. But any fountain pen will do that. Um, but yeah, it writes well. Reverse writing, not so great. In fact, not existent. Um, this pen is also like on the lower end of ink as well. Um, it's a relatively stiff nib. Don't push it too hard. You can if you write slowly and press down a little bit more. You let a little bit a little bit more ink down, but it's not really flexing. But as you would expect from Diplomat, this pen writes well. As I said, smooth, consistent, pretty reliable. Uh, and, uh, you know, being a number six steel nib, it is, you know, sort of from Yovo, you sort of get what you, you get, what you expect. So let's talk about some pros and cons now. I'm going to start with the cons. The first is one that will be personal to individuals with this pen, and that is the tactile feeling of these rings. Now, what I mean by that is if you look up close, they are cut at a very precise angle. It's sharp. It's not. They're not particularly deep, but you can feel. Oh, that just gripped so much I pulled the cap, the body off. Um, you know, you can feel those rings, and so that tactile experience is going to be not something for everyone. I know that. We all know that. But that is it's just something to be aware of. That they aren't smooth rings. They are cut in, and you can absolutely feel them. The next thing uh, is that is the grip section. Now it is narrow. It does not get narrowed down, and there's a decent sized step down off the barrel. But what people are going to be upset about is that this is a slick section, and even I feel like even I feel this is sort of like relatively slick. For some reason, the section here on the arrow, it's kind of a little bit more matte. Like the anodizer, you know, the anodization of it is more matte. Uh, and so I don't feel it so much on the aero, but I really feel how slick the section is here on the e-logs. Um, and so, I, yeah, I, can't, I think that that's going to be an issue for some people. Um, in between pros and cons, I'm going to talk about the price. So, in Australia, this pen retails for $300 to $370, depending on where you go and if it's on special and all those kinds of things. And you can also buy this upgraded in Australia with a gold nib for about 625 So, not an inexpensive pen. That's 212 US dollars from a particular retailer at the, not the MSRP, but at the, like, the selling price. And 215 euro. For that, you are getting an anodized steel pen, or metal, aluminium pen, with a steel nib cartridge converter. I think this is at the top end of its price point. Diplomat pens are not inexpensive. And this comes in around the same kind of price as things like the Aero. For another, yeah, for another steel nibbed pen, cartridge converter, all that, I think there are other pens on the market that come in at a really interesting price point that may have slightly different features or a wider range of nibs available or more interesting material or a different filling system. So, as I said, I think this is at the top, top, top point of its appropriate price range. There are absolutely big pros with this pen. I love how it writes. I've done a lot of writing with it. Um, as you could see when I took the, the you know, showing the uh, converter there, like, I'm working my way through this converter. This is the second fill of ink I've had in this pen. So, it's... A pen I enjoy writing with. I've written with it a lot. It is consistent. It writes well. Uh, also, I like the size and the weight. Like, you know, it's kind of, it's a nice size. It's comfortable. And the weight feels good in the hand. It's substantial enough that you know you've got a pen. 
in your hand, but not so heavy that it, that you really feel the weight in your hand. And I think the way that the pen is balanced sort of like in your fingers feels nice as well. So lots to like, not a whole lot to dislike. It's a good pen. It's what you would expect from a Diplomat. If you've used the Aero, you'll know how this pen feels. Well, the Aero is a little heavier. There's a bit more metal in it, I think. Um, but yeah, I think Diplomat make nice pens. As I said, the Excellence A2 is a pen that I consider absolutely one of my favorite pens. So if you're interested in these pens, check them out. Uh, but maybe try and find it on special. I think if you can get a reduced price on a pen like this, it becomes a very, very attractive option. So thank you for watching. I, please like and subscribe and hit the notifications button and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you've got a product you'd like me to look at, get in touch. If you'd like to support the channel, please, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.